Hi fellow traders, as promised, I am hitting a reset button on my how to day trade with a small account video series. Um, and so now it's how to day trade with a small account 2.0. And the reason why I'm doing a reset is because of the feedback I got and the criticisms. And, you know, I'm the type person where I listen to everybody. You know, you, it could be negative, it could be positive, it doesn't matter. I take it all in because that's the only way that I feel that a person can move from being average to being good, and then from being good to being great, and then from being great to being phenomenal. And I want to continue to get better and continue to grow as long as I live. And that, that's my focus. So I take everything seriously and I decided that, you know, I was inconsistent. I wasn't living up to the promise of the focus I was supposed to put on this. So I decided to just take the fourth quarter, start at the fourth quarter and reset and just make sure that I'm consistent in what I'm doing. That I'm consistently doing my recaps on whether I trade or not. I'm going over some of the things that the challenges and and all of that. So it's, it's very important that I do things the right way. So that's why I'm, I'm hitting the reset button. So anytime you have any um, comments, you know, please send them. I don't care if they're negative or not you know it's up to you whether you let negative come into your into your being I mean with me I turn negatives into positives if there's a criticism if there's a negative comment I look to see well how can I make this positive you know some people will never be positive they're always gonna look for negatives in you but that's fine let them be them and you take that negative energy and you flip it into positive energy. And it's amazing how far you can go if you do that. Uh, my focus now is, is going to be 120% on this small account. Now, I'm comfortable with my swing trades in my other account. So I, I feel I can sustain myself doing that. So my focus is going to be 100% on day trading this small account because if I'm going to teach it, if I'm going to work with traders, then I need to practice what I preach. So what I'm teaching, they need, I would want you to see it um, day in and day out. So I'm focusing on stocks still between $10 and $100. Now, yeah, if I get a six, seven, eight dollar stock that has massive range and that's tradable to me, then yeah, I'll probably take it. But for me, my my range is between ten and a hundred dollars. And I know you're probably saying, well, how are you going to trade a hundred dollar stock? You know, with a fifteen hundred dollar account. Well, you don't have to take. A whole bunch of shares sometimes a hundred dollar stock can move five or six points and if you have fifty dollars or fifty shares of it you know fifty shares times five points is two hundred and fifty dollars and that's not bad for a you know a, a small account so you know we're gonna be I'm gonna kind of share with you how I focus and why you know, it's no big deal for me to trade larger dollar stocks with a small account. You know, you just have to make sure that the potential moves are there and the opportunity to make money is there. Um, I'm only going to trade my strategies. Um, you know, if you've seen me trade in, in chat, you know I stick to my, st my strategies. I don't chase waterfalls. And, you know, that's just how I've been able to sustain my my career as long as I have so that I could continue to get better 
Um, opening range breakouts and breakdowns, that's what I look for first. Those are my opening trades. Then I look for reversals. And I do the VWAP trades. And the VWAP trades are usually secondary trades to the opening range breakouts or breakdowns and to the reversals. So my goal and my focus is going to be to nail, if I could get one good stock from my watch list every day, where I could get the opening range breakout, then either catch a VWAP bounce or or a, a full-fledged reversal, and then take a VWAP trade. That'll be be beautiful. Um, but I'm only going to focus on A plus setups, and I use three scans. I know we have a whole bunch of scans that you know we have up in chat because we teach several different strategies that use different scans. But for me, the only scans that I use for my setups. I have a pre-market gap scan. I have the opening range breakout or breakdown scan, which I don't use every day. The only time I use that scan um, exclusively is if I do not have a watch list, meaning nothing hit my scans that was worth trading before nine o'clock. So at that point, I'll just watch my opening range breakout or breakdown scan, you know, at the open. And I have a reversal scan. So those are the only scans that I use that I watch throughout the day. Um, my other focus, record my platform all day. I want to start recording in the morning and just let it record. Um, I've got a, a high capacity um, thumb drive that I can hold several days on so I'm gonna do that and you know I'll be able to catch everything and that ought to help me be consistent with my daily recaps um, the main thing is to show um, entries and exits and talk through my thoughts as the trades are happening or developing and you know edit that at the end of the day and try to post it now yes yeah, some days there are things going on and I, I won't have time to do it but it will be a lot more consistent than what it was in the past you know that was one of the the criticisms was you know this was a secondary thought and you know if I had time I did it if not this really wasn't my focus and it's hard for people that are trying to follow me and trying to learn from me to you know not be consistent and I preach consistency and I believe that there's power in consistency so I if I preach it I need to be it so my focus is to really be um, consistent now here's a snapshot of what my account is now I took out 1500 bucks and I left this in because my my fees haven't come out for last month. Um, so Monday, I'm I'm expecting Monday morning all of my fees to have come out. And I'm not sure how much all of that's going to be. So we may, we'll probably end up a little bit over 1500 bucks. But I didn't want to put, I didn't want to do what I did the last time and not have enough in there. And then it starts out below. Um, but you know anything between fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars I think will pretty much give the same effect um, and I I'm I firmly believe I know sure trader you can start with five hundred bucks but that's not gonna work um, I feel that you need to have at least fifteen hundred dollars in your account at least before you start trying to trade live twenty five hundred is ideal but 1500 you know, is the minimum. And that's where I started. Uh, like I said, I had trouble. I had to refund this thing four or five times when I first started. You know, but that's because I, I didn't start with the right education. And the things just, I didn't have my stuff together. All right, so my tools. 
Um, my broker is sure trader. Um, that's the best option if you're going to be below $25,000. Um, I know they're offshore. A lot of people have problems with that. But if you look at, and I was pleasantly surprised when I went to um, wire out my money, was that they changed the, the um, bank that they wire money to and from. You know, right now a Citibank in uh, here in the United States. I think when I wired in the first time, it was to some bank in China or somewhere. But you know, I was pleasantly surprised, and and I got my money pretty quick when I took out the fifteen hundred dollars. It was like the next day I had it in my account. But I think a lot of that too has to to deal with your bank as to how quick or how slow you know you get your money I'm not sure about the credit card deposits anymore I think they had a problem with it and um, they shut that down I think there's a fraud issue going on with that so but wiring I know it costs 40 bucks um, that's just the cost of doing business uh, you know it's just like people that may not have good credit you know, to get a loan, it's going to cost them more. And because we don't have $25,000 and we're trying to, to get started in this, it's going to cost us more. And we're going to have our hands tied a little bit more. So it's going to be frustrating. But once you accept it and you understand the limitations and the restrictions that you have to work within, it's a whole lot better than trying to do three day trades a a, uh, a week. I mean, a whole lot better. So if you manage it right. Now, yeah, if you manage it wrong, it's not going to work for you. And a lot of the negative feedback that we see on SureTrader is because there are people that got in that really didn't know what they were doing, lost all their money, couldn't figure it out, didn't, weren't educated. And so they're going to gripe about it. They're going to blame everybody else but themselves. But I've worked with SureTrader for two and a half, almost three years now, going on three years. And the little problems that I have had have been fixed. And, you know, and the, and the problems I had, I realized once I read what the the policy was, I realized that. I didn't read it and I didn't know what the hell I was doing and that's why I gave up some extra money so you know we will be using short trader and any problems I have you you know I will share them just like I did the last time um, my scanner I use trade ideas and Finviz, but trade ideas uh, my subscription is $75 a month there's nothing else out there that I feel as good as trade ideas nothing as far as getting you to stocks and getting them on time and the filters that you can put in there's so much you can do with trade ideas I, I think I've only scratched 10 percent of the surface with it um, Finviz is free but you it won't scan live won't continuously feed you live data I think they update every 15 minutes and then you have to refresh your screen to really get any updates so Finviz is good at night if you're looking, you know, back at what happened that day. And, you know, it, it's pretty good at night. But um, for an intraday scanner, trade ideas you can't beat. It's just one of those, those ne necessary tools. And I've got a $75 a month subscription. The regular one is $99. But if you... Are a member of warrior trading I think they still have that deal I'm not sure but I know it they did when I got it so mine is $75 a month um, my charting I use think or swim uh, really because I love the charting and I know it has lag issues sometimes but that's due to whenever my internet is slow it lags so I, I can tell now that it's not really think or swim. It's my internet speed coming through. And because the speed changes, I can look at it now and I can have awesome speed. But then in a couple of hours, 
my internet speed could be so slow that everything is lagging and you know that there's nothing wrong with think or swim it's just my um, network speed so what I did I've spent some money and upgraded it and I've got probably the best and the fastest modems that you know I can use and I've got it hardwired onto my computer so I'm not using wireless so so far I think it's has been doing great and it's free you know I love the charting they have all of the studies they have more studies than you can ever dream of and they also you can use it for scanning because before I bought trade ideas I tried using think and swim for scanning yeah it got frustrating and some of the things would hit late but I was able to trade and I was able to to maintain and manage but now I see that trade ideas kind of freed up my mind and took some of that stress of worrying about missing a trade because this thing is you know the scanning doesn't update you know real time like it should um for news i use finviz in the morning and think of swim you know has a benzinga feed for free uh, so i use those two for news so you can see i don't really have a whole lot you know 124 dollars um 75 um, but then i add my my cable in because the only thing I use my cable for is my internet so we don't watch cable we have satellite so it makes sense that the cable bill gets paid out of my trading you know and that's about 80 bucks a month so it's um I don't have a whole lot of overhead but I do suggest getting the sure trader pro platform trading on the net the internet based platform is way too risky and i would not suggest doing that so it's well worth paying 124 dollars a month to get on the pro platform now i will have another um the next video i'm going to do i'm going to break down um, the sure trader pro platform you know what I have so that if you want to get it you can I'm gonna do my um, review on sure trader that's just what the next video is gonna be and I'll probably post it tomorrow that's that's my goal um, so now how do I find the stocks to trade now there are thousands of stocks that move every day but a lot of them are not tradable um, so the potential number of trade opportunities can be overwhelming so you have to filter down and filter through those thousands of stocks to find the ones that will best fit your strategy the strategy that you like to trade um, the whole key of day trading is to find stocks that are in play that particular day you can't look at a stock that was breaking out two weeks ago because it may be flatlining now so you want to make sure that we're you're finding stocks that not only fit your strategy but that are in play that day and to find these it takes preparation and it takes a little bit of work um, you don't want to sit back and wait for somebody to give you a watch list unless you're just learning if you're just learning and you're taking a class then yeah you know use people's watch lists but once you develop your strategy and you get it down you want to become self-sufficient you don't want to be dependent on somebody to tell you what stocks to watch you know you want to be able to do your own thing um, I have a morning routine and, and you guys have heard me say this time and time again it's very important to have a routine going into the open now and if you've been in if you're in chat you notice that if I'm late getting in I do not trade in the morning I won't even make a watch list because if I'm not if I don't have my pre rocket pre-market routine down then 
I'm going to go into the market feeling behind and the anxiety is going to cause me to make bad decisions. So if I can't follow my morning routine, then I'm not going to um, not going to trade the morning. I'm just not going to do it. And my morning routine, I wake up at, at six. I check the S&P E-mini futures before I head to the gym because I, I want to see what the market did overnight. The E-mini futures trade overnight and it kind of gives me a snapshot of where the market's going to trade that day. Um, but so it gives me something to think about while I'm working out. Um, I'm back home by eight o'clock from the gym. I'll eat breakfast and by 8.15 or so, sometimes I'm cooking it and I'm, I'm logging in while I'm cooking because, you know, I have my, my platform is on wheels. I can roll it all throughout the house. So depending on what room I want to be in that day, that's where I can roll my my platform to. Um, but I'm logging into my trade ideas and think or swim and I'm starting to build my watch list. So sometimes I'm eating breakfast while I'm building my watch list. Um, but from nine o'clock to nine thirty, I'm going to track the stocks that make my watch list. If it doesn't get on my watch list by nine, I'm not going to, I don't even look at it. I'm not going to look at it to trade open and range breakout. Now, if it hits my scan after nine and it looks good, I'll put it on my watch list and I will look to trade the secondary trade, either the pullback or a VWAP trade off of it. But I will not trade the open range breakout because I would not have enough time to feel the pulse of the stock. I like, even though it's pre-market and it doesn't have as much volume, how it trades pre-market really gives me a an idea and a feeling of what it's going to do when it opens and I like to spend that first 30 minutes going through that stock okay I use trade ideas again to scan pre-market for the gappers um, I'm looking for stocks between 10 and 100 dollars stocks that have gapped up at least four percent gapped up or down at least four percent or gapped up or down a dollar now some stocks will move a dollar and only be up two percent or down two percent, but you know either way that's what I'm looking at. Um, I like the pre-market volume to be above 50k. It won't hit my scan unless it hits 50k. And the ATR I have changed this. Um, I like it to be at least a dollar. Those I'll focus on first, but if I can't find any. You know, I will take some that's, you know, anywhere from 50 to 75 cents. Less than 50 cent average true range, I, you know, won't even look at. Uh, and the float, I like to see them less than 500 million. I know less than 100 million is low float stocks, but I'm not looking for these low float runners. That's not my trading style. Um, I'm looking for more trend following stocks. So anything less than 500 million, you know, is going to be good with me. Uh, once I get the candidates, I vet them using FinViz and Thinkorswim. Uh, FinViz, I can quickly look at the news highlights and I can look at the average volume um, quickly. I can look at the an analysis rating, the analyst ratings. Um, if that changed, I can quickly look at that um, and Thinkorswim. I can look at the news too on Thinkorswim, but I use it to do my daily chart analysis. I find the support and resistance and I identify windows of opportunity. So this tells me whether my stock is tradable or not. And you know, once it's proven to be tradable, it makes my watch list. All right, my final preparation, I had a watch list complete by nine. I'm only focusing on one to three stocks. I'm watching price action into the open and as I'm watching the price action I'm developing these plans in my head I'm looking at where it's trading in relation to the VWAP 
to the daily support and resistance levels to where it's trading related to the pre-market high or pre-market low and I start developing trading plans for it so that if I get the five minute open range breakout this is going to be my first profit target you know this is my ultimate profit target or if I get the breakdown you know the same way now if I don't get a watch list and that happened a couple of times last week I will just wait and watch the five minute open range breakout scan um, I do have a scan that looks for stocks that are breaking up their five minute open range high or low and I can you know kind of quickly look at that to see if there's a setup that I really like um, then the reversal scans I shift to them after 10 o'clock and the rest of the day will be either reversals or secondary VWAP trades and that's you know my day um, it's very simple it's very focused and very straightforward when you start focusing on too many things and chasing too many things you tend not to be very profitable all right and here's some free resources um, think or swim they have proprietary scans for morning gappers um, I can show you those if you want to get with me um, just shoot me an email or something I can tell you where to find those um, they may be a little tricky to find at first but once I work you through it then you'll be able to find it every day um, nasdaq.com and the stockmarketwatch.com if you don't have a live scanner and you want to look for the pre-market stocks that gapped up um, those are two free resources that you can use in addition to um, to Finviz uh, here's my contact information um, my website my blog um, Twitter uh, I've got email um, ed at warriortrading.com average joe trader at gmail.com um, or if you're in a um, warrior trading chat you can always um, PM me um, I'm, I'm there most of the time every now and then I'll step out to grab something to eat or I might have to walk outside and blow off some steam but you know for the most part I'm there all day long um, even though the way I trade sometimes is boring uh, but when they do hit and when they do work you know my setups they do get exciting so I'm there waiting for it to happen so again uh, I want to apologize to everybody that you know was looking for something more consistent when I first started it um, my goal is to provide that this time I'm not going to go backwards on it um, if I blow up then I'll refund it and we'll start over again um, because I'm gonna tell you it is not easy it is so much easier trading my other account than it is trading this account which is probably why I kept navigating to it because this was so difficult but it is difficult it's not easy but it's gonna take sticking to your process sticking to my setups and only taking the A plus setups. You know, if, if it's sitting on my hands for one day here and a day there, then that's what has to happen. Um, that's what I had to do when I grew my account. There were many days where I didn't take a trade at all. But the days that I took a trade, you know, turned out real well. So we're gonna be back in the saddle again tomorrow. Look for my sure trader video. I'm gonna knock that one out and we'll see where we go from there so i hope to see everybody in um in you know in chat that's in chat um and if you know anybody that can benefit from following this uh let me know let them know i'm um, telling them where to find me it's going to be on my youtube channel and 
you know, let them know. I'm going to try to make a designation so that you know which ones are starting from October 1st. So, you know, just spread the word for me and we try to get as many people um, going on this as possible. So until next time, um, have a great day, a great Saturday, and we'll see you in, in the market.